My name is Adrian Green, I'm the Senior Manager of Estates at Sandhurst Trustees and I'm based here where we are today at 18 View Street in Bendigo. And one of the real highlights of my work is working in this historic building but also dealing with um, many files that uh, have been running for many years and also dealing with many families where we've been helping them over a number of generations. So there's quite a history side to the work that I do. We tend to think of the centre of Bendigo as being Mitchell Street and the shops all along there, in particular the town hall tucked in um, on Littleton Terrace. But the um, original core part, and particularly the public building part of Bendigo, was really the View Street. There was courthouse, um, uh, police station, in this case the post office, the, the um, site where Santos Trustees is, and other government sort of functions all up this end of, of View Street. So um, this was more, I gather, the central part of, of Bendigo, at least initially, um, and it's only in more recent years that Mitchell Street has become sort of the, the focus of Bendigo shopping and those sorts of things. Well, when it was first and why it was here was that the View Street was actually the commercial hub of um, Sanders Town and then it became the commercial hub of Bendigo with Bank of New South Wales, Commercial Banking Company of Sydney, T&G Insurance, all those ones were noted in the street, ANZ Bank, uh, a couple of theatres and things, so it was the hub. Well, the building itself is just a terrific building to like and love. You never get sick of coming into the place. Different shadow, different time of the day, different sun, whatever. Night time um, throws a different appearance of the building and you never get sick of it. And we see it still as an ideal place to be. We're not far off the CBD, although we're not right in the CBD. Um, the offices show that we've actually been around for a number of years and that we've got some quality behind us as a company and as a business and what we provide. And, um, well, I suppose we live up to our motto, mindful, faithful and lasting. So mindful of the people, faithful to the people and lasting. So I guess we've proved that by being going since 1888 and also in the one building since 1891. But for about 30 years before that, the building had another function. So it was um, Bendigo's post office. It wasn't Bendigo's first post office, but it was the largest of the post offices that was built over a number of years. And it was the post office built before the Pall Mall post office was built in um, the 18, late 1880s. So it was um, Bendigo's post office, and it had different extensions added to it. For example, a telegraph um, side of things for the, the old post office meant adding on a couple of extra rooms and I guess there were other sort of professional rooms also based in, in the building. Part of the uh, history in some of the, the books to do with Bendigo talks about the building was built in a particular way so that the coaches could drive around the building, drive up one side, collect the gold because the post office would have um, acted as a central sort of repository or safe keeping spot for the gold, collect the gold and then keep going back around the other side presumably minimising any chances for uh, problems or robberies or whatever, and that's why the building has a laneway on either side to allow the coach to come up in one direction, round the back, collect the gold, and out on the other side. Well, on this particular site, there was a post office before. It wasn't much more than a bark and iron building, just a single storey, just a small post office, because Bendigo, or Sandhurst as it became at that time, was actually just getting going in the gold rush days. They then decided they would build a new post office, so the central section is what we see it without the two wings on it was built at that particular time. And evidently in the advertiser they commented that it wasn't a good enough post office even then for you know what they expected to Santa's town to have. But then they decided that they would actually build a new one down in Pall Mall, so that one was created in the mid-1880s. That then left this as surplus to their requirements, but... Um, Certainly on the outside of the building, if, if you're looking at it as it is today, it's got the appearance of big blocks of concrete on the outside, but uh, underneath that uh, it was actually rendered in the 1860s, and um, it's actually a red brick building underneath it all. So if that was taken off, people would probably marvel at the building even more today, but back then red brick wasn't as appreciated as it is in 2012, so people know that they, they can imagine what it would look like. But, uh, so that was all done and um, then the new post office was opened. Well, this was then offered for sale to the public and Sanders Trustees was stayed in, started in 1888 and it was further down in Pall Mall, just in small rooms and 
they paid £4,000 for what was then the building um, and purchased it and moved into just one small side of it at that particular time because the post office hadn't quite moved out and then they did and in um, the late 1890s there were some renovations undertaken and in another lot in 1908. From the outside a lot of the local people talk about um, the building has, has remained the same and for them it's a sort of a sign of continuity on that side of things. But internally there's been some slight rearrangements but all of the rearrangements have tried to be done with um, keeping some of the historic features whether it's panelling like you can see in this room or some of the other features of the building and I guess as times change office practices change and the need to, to fit in cabling and those sorts of things have been fitted in around the fabric of the building without changing it to a huge extent on the inside. The other unique thing that has happened to this building is that it's been extended and um, down the laneway which leads into the club there's evidence of three different types of extension and the most recent one was 2003 when the staff room which was a weatherboard structure was pulled down and um, we built a new room there but did it with the same keeping on the outside so the stucco um, outside and all that sort of stuff was reflected on the outside rather than the weatherboard and we had to go through with heritage then and, and do all the requirements and um, we actually did build it in the old way of doing it so very well done in 2003. Um, the other thing that you will find if you get right up into the rafters of the top floor at the front section of the building is that there was a fire here and that was 1949 and we actually had a dentist upstairs who was um, had his rooms upstairs and Evidently he was um, making plates for false teeth before he went home and he left the thing running overnight and that caught fire. But uh, as the fire brigade was just a couple hundred yards up the street at that particular time, they were down here fairly quickly and put it out. But anyone doing wiring right up in the rafters and that still comes out black from the soot that's on everything up there. So we were quite lucky to um, save the building at that time. Then you've got the front section or anything that you can see from the street on the roof is actually slate. We had that all renovated and gone over and retightened and everything in 1999. Up above the facade, up the top, you'll find our name, Sanders Trustees Limited. Um, that was actually put there for the 1988 centenary of the company and it disappeared for a number of years. And you will find in the very early pet photos that there's no front gates on the entrance for you. They were put in in 1960 because um, it, it was just seen that people were um, entering the foyer part overnight and that sort of thing. So um, we built those, but then again, they're just not normal gates. Um, they've actually got the casting of the company, the castle, which is our logo, uh, set into them as well. So um, they're made in the old style to look like they've been there forever. You will find um, down the laneway which is paved on the uphill side that there is a couple of entrance pillars to that laneway which have been there since the building was put up and they were cut out of granite at that particular time. There were three but um, we took it from two gates back to one so therefore the central pillar went.